The subtraction of decimals is very similar to the subtraction of whole numbers, so let's first take a look at a whole number problem. If we have 426 and we're subtracting 34, the first thing that we should notice is that already this problem has been lined up along the right hand side here. And the purpose of that is to give us place value by place value uh, in columns so that we can subtract those columns going from the right to the left. So if I'm just looking at the 6 and the 4, then 6 minus 4 gives me 2. That goes right below it. And then I just move to the left. When I'm looking at the next one, it is 2 minus 3. Now for 2 minus 3, technically I mean I, I can't take away 3 if I only have 2. So if you recall, we have a fix for that. We have borrowing where I can take 1 from this 4, making it now a 3. And that 1 that I took from the 4, I can give to the next digit over to the right. So instead of a 2, that's now a 12. This allows me to do the subtraction because now I have 12 minus 3 and that I can do. 12 minus 3 gives us 9. And then I just keep moving to the left. 3, there's nothing down there. If it's helpful, I could put a 0 down there because, I mean, nothing's there. 3 minus 0, though, is still 3. So we have our solution, 392. So if I'm doing this with decimals, I just want to follow the same process. Now, if it's not already done, the decimals definitely need to be lined up. Uh, back to our previous question, these decimals were lined up, they just weren't decimals. I mean, if they were decimals, the decimals would be on the far right hand side. So we were lining up place value by place value. Since the decimals are already lined up, we have place value on top of place value. So I can do the subtraction in columns just like before. Uh, 3 minus 3, that we can do, gives us 0. We move over to the next column. 5 minus 9. Uh, I'm trying to take away 9, which is bigger than the 5 that I started with, so I'm going to have to do the borrowing. Taking 1 from the next digit over would make that a 6. And then the 1 that I took can be applied to that 5, making it a 15. Then I can subtract. 15 minus 9, that we can do. 15 minus 9, 6 and keep going to the left. 6 minus 1 because remember it was 7 but we've already taken one away from it so now it's 6 so it's 6 minus 1. That gives us the 5. Now for the decimal we lined up the decimals and the decimal in our answer is still going to be lined up right below that so that if I keep going place value by place value when I move on to the next one and I get the 8 minus 3, that also gives us 5, but it is now to the left of the decimal. So this way, we have our solution, 5.560. Technically, we don't have to write the 0 out there, but there's nothing wrong with leaving it there. So that is the two decimals having been subtracted.